Hey there, it's Vicki Marie and today I have a cook with me video. Um, over Christmas, uh, Christmas Day, we had lasagna. I did Italian, uh, an Italian meal and I made some lasagna and I, uh, and I made some other dishes as well. But now the lasagna I made a couple of days in advance and then I put it in the fridge and then I cooked it uh, Christmas Day morning or you know like mid-morning and we ate about 2 o'clock so or 1.30 and um, this lasagna came out so good. I did use the uh, ingredients, the um, the what do you call it, the, the recipe on the box of the Barilla Oven Ready Lasagna. That's the recipe that I used, and I tweaked it just a little bit. I added a little more meat to it, and I added some little more sauce and cheese. And of course, you can't go wrong with that. You know, more cheese, more sauce always makes a recipe better. This is definitely not low carb, so you might want to skip this one if you're on a diet. But if you are wanting to cook for a family, you have a holiday coming up or just a family event, you can make this any time of the year. It is so good. And I hope you guys enjoy this and let me know in the comments if you like uh, these types of videos. And uh, yeah, and if you do try this, let me know. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really easy lasagna. I made this the day before our family got together and I covered it and put it in the fridge and the next day I just took it right out of the fridge, stuck it in the oven. It was wonderful. It, it's a make ahead. Very easy. Let's get started by preheating the oven to 375 degrees. I'm using the recipe right off of the back of the Barilla oven ready lasagna box. and. I am making a couple of changes. I'm using two pounds of meat rather than the one pound that it calls for. And so you're going to want to go ahead and make your meat uh, either ahead of time or uh, right before you start your lasagna. So I'm going to make my meat here. I'm going to cook it in the Instant Pot. You can do it on the stove if you want, but the way I do it in the Instant Pot is I go ahead and spray it with a little bit of Pam spray and I'm going to put set the, the uh, the setting on saute. If you want a detailed uh, instructions on using the Instant Pot and cooking Italian sausage, let us know in the comments, but I'm going to assume that you know this, this is not a, an Instant Pot demonstration. Um, I just want you to know I do my, my uh, Italian sausage in the Instant Pot. I begin by sauteing it on the saute setting until it's browned. And then I will add just a little bit of water, about eighth of a cup of water, and cover that, seal it, and set it to high pressure for about five to eight minutes. And that's probably a little overkill, but it, it works. And, uh, and then I have my two pounds of cooked ground Italian sausage, which is what you'll want for this recipe. You can also use ground beef. Now as I finish cooking this in my Instant Pot, I'm going to go through the ingredients with you. I am going to use the ingredients, I'm using the recipe right off the Barilla Oven Ready uh, Lasagna um, box and I'm just using twice as much meat and a little bit more cheese and sauce. So you're going to start with uh, one box of the 9 ounce uh, box of Barilla Oven Ready Lasagna, two eggs, one uh, container of a 15 ounce container of ricotta cheese, four cups of shredded mozzarella cheese. I did have an extra cup on hand that I did end up using. Uh, a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, which is optional. The recipe calls for one pound of ground beef or a uh, uh, pound of uh, sausage browned, and I am using two cups. You could also use a pound of, I mean, I'm using two pounds, and you can also use a pound of each if you want. And then it calls for two 24 ounce jars of spaghetti sauce. I'm using the Classico uh, tomato basil um, for my recipe, which turned out really, really good. You can use parsley as well to garnish if you like. So let's start off now by adding the ricotta cheese to a bowl and this is the 15 ounce container of ricotta cheese. And I'm going to add two cups of the mozzarella cheese. 
for the filling. And then I went ahead and put a half a cup of the Parmesan cheese in here. Now the other two cups of the mozzarella cheese um, is going to be placed aside for layering. That's where I did use a little more cheese in the layering than what it called for. But I did put two cups of, of uh, mozzarella cheese in this, uh, this mixture. This is the cheese mixture that you're going to use now to layer la your lasagna. So you're now going to use the, um, the pasta, this mixture, the sauce, and the meat and you're going to layer that in your pan and I'll show you how I did that. Now my sausage is done cooking in the Instapot. I'm going to make sure it's depressurized and it did depressurize on its own. I allowed it to do that. Uh, if you're familiar with Instapot, you do have to make sure they depressurize before you take that top off. It's very important and uh, mine um, did that naturally. You can uh, release that valve on your own, uh, but it's usually better to just uh, try to let it depressurize uh, naturally. So. Um, now, in the Instapot, it does kind of cook in a little more lumpy than it would in a skillet where you are tending to it, but that was easily resolved. I just went ahead and chopped that up with my, uh, with my turner there, and uh, then I will go ahead and drain the meat. Whether you're using beef or Italian sausage, you are going to want to, um, to strain the, the meat so you don't have that fat liquid in there. And now you're going to spray a 13 by 9 by 3 pan with uh, Pam cooking spray and just uh, put enough sauce on the, uh, in the pan to coat the bottom. Again, I am using the Classico uh, sauce. I really like this sauce. And you can mix and match the flavors that you like, but I like the tomato basil uh, the best. And I'm just going to coat the bottom of my my, my glass pan. I'm using glass. You could use aluminum pan or even one of the throwaway pans if you like. And here is the oven ready lasagna and the recipe that I'm using is right on the back of this box. And I'm going to just go ahead and layer four of these noodles across the bottom. And those noodles will expand. Again, my pan is a little bigger than a 13 by 9, um, but these noodles did expand and in the end it turned out really really good. Now the recipe says to order in this, uh, to, to layer in this order to do the uncooked pasta and then um, the ricotta cheese and then the meat and then one cup of mozzarella cheese and one cup of spaghetti sauce and then you layer that uh, uh, over over uh, several times. As you see, I don't follow the recipe exactly. I added extra sauce and extra cheese and extra meat to my lasagna. I guess I feel that I'm a bit of a Picasso, which means either I'm a genius or I'm a complete mess. Uh, honestly, we know I'm a mess in the kitchen. Let's, uh, let's not kid ourselves, I'm not a genius in the kitchen. I don't always follow the recipe and so what I'm doing here is um, I'm just taking a scoop of, uh, of the, the cheese mixture and I'm taking spoonfuls and I'm just plopping them in several places here and spreading them out until I cover my area here. So again I started with a little bit of sauce and then I put down the pasta and then I put a little more sauce and now I'm doing the cheese, um, the cheese mixture. So now I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some mozzarella cheese. Uh, now the recipe says to sprinkle a total of two cups is what you'll need for layering. So that's why you need four cups for this recipe. Because remember, two cups of mozzarella cheese goes into the filling. Um, I used probably more like three cups uh, of uh, a total of five cups in the recipe and three of them went into the layering. So 
uh, that's what I did. I did extra cheese. I think that's what makes it so good. Extra meat, extra cheese. So once I sprinkle down that, um, that mozzarella cheese, now I'm going to layer, uh, put down some meat, and this is just the ground Italian sausage, and I'm using, t again, and I keep saying this, but twice as much meat as the recipe called. Honestly, I don't think you can get this wrong. Uh, once you start layering, you'll find you really just can't get this wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and now put another cup of, uh, of sauce over the meat. And then I'm going to go ahead and put four more noodles across the top. And then some more sauce. And I think in the recipe when I read it, it really doesn't say to put more sauce across the top. I think you're supposed to spread your cheese right on top of that. Uh, pasta, but I, as I said, I used extra sauce. Luckily, I hit a sale at King Supers on uh, pasta and pasta sauce right before uh, I was making this dish. And then I just take some more mozzarella cheese. Or no, I'm sorry, this is the cheese filling, um, not the mozzarella cheese, the cheese filling um, by the scoop full and just spread it. And I'm just using my measuring cup to uh, spread that. I, I think probably uh, like a rubber spatula would have worked really well. The cheese was thick and it is a little challenging to work with, um, but this is the easiest way I found to spread it is just to drop it by spoonfuls and sort of flatten it out or by scoopfuls. And now some more mozzarella cheese on top of that. Some more meat. And now we're going to go ahead and put another layer of sauce and then four more uh, of the pastas. And now I'm just going to go ahead and do one more layer uh, and it'll be again the same thing. We'll do the four pastas and you will notice the gap. Uh, this is again a bigger pan than what the recipe called for but that pasta does expand and it looked really nice after I cooked it. And now we're going to do this one more time. I'm going to add more sauce, more cheese and meat, and then the final four uh, pastas, the final layer of pasta. And now uh, we're going to, we've put the final uh, layer of pasta on the top. So we're going to top that now with some sauce, just the rest of the sauce. Get that uh, spread out. And I went ahead and grabbed another jar. And um, because this is where I'm, I needed just a little more sauce. And that's why I would encourage you to have a little extra sauce on hand. And we're going to top that with some mozzarella cheese 
and again I am using uh, I, I used more than what the recipe called for so I think it is helpful to have a little extra mozzarella cheese on hand as well and we're not going to be putting the ricotta cheese or the meat on top of on this top layer just sauce and the mozzarella cheese and then I'm topping that with a little bit of Parmesan cheese and that is optional but I do like to top it with that and then I'm also going to top it with a few parsley flakes just for the garnish it I think it looks pretty and that is it so I'm going to go ahead and cover this with uh, some foil and stick it in the fridge and I will cook it tomorrow and if you're going to cook it right away you just want to again I said preheat the oven that's only if of course you're cooking it uh, right away but you're going to want to cook it uh, in an oven uh, on 375 degrees for 50 to 60 minutes and then take the, uh, the foil off and cook for about another five minutes. Make sure that cheese gets melted and let it sit for 15 minutes before you serve it. This is so good. I hope that you enjoyed this recipe. Do give us a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.